Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hi, welcome to another practical session of Spatial Statistics and Spatial Econometrics. We're working with the R programming language. My name is Seth, and the topic for today is Krigging and cross-validation. Um, we're working on acquiring programming skills for spatial statistics, uh, but acquiring these skills is founded on our understanding, solid understanding of the conceptual material. Uh, and for today's session, you will need to know um, what a model fitting procedure is. You will have, have some a good understanding of what it means to fit a model and what it means to fit a model variogram, which is something that we did in the previous session. Um, uh, you will need to remember, at least have a passing recollection of Kriging estimators and Kriging equations, the process of Kriging, what does it mean, what does it do? Um, and of course, know what ordinary least squares is. Uh, which, uh, which is uh, not necessarily covered in this course, but this is something uh, it will be helpful for you to know because this will be using it in today's session. Uh, for programming, skill-wise, um, in the previous session, what we did was we estimated and fitted variograms uh, using two data sets, using the MUSE data set as well as the Western UP groundwater level data sets. Um, and this is something that uh, uh, ideally, uh, hopefully, that we, we are, we're very comfortable with because we're going to build on this today. What will we do today? So we will look at the, uh, the, uh, the parameters of our fitted variogram. So the, the main parameters that kind of tell us the shape of our fitted variogram, uh, and these are called sill, nugget, and range. Uh, I hope you know what those mean. If you don't, please refer to the appropriate video and review that material. Um, and then we will use our fitted variogram to perform uh, Kriging, spatial prediction, with ordinary Kriging. Uh, yani we will uh, try to predict the values of groundwater levels at locations where we have no data from the observed data. Uh, and then we will cross-validate our model variogram selection. So we will prov provide an additional way to quantify or to measure how good the selected model is and how much agreement there is between the predicted values and the observed values of groundwater levels. If that's clear, none, if some of that is not clear, please pause the video now and, and go back and review the material. If that's clear, let's move ahead. Uh, so remember, this is as, as far as we had got last time. Uh, this uh, set of blue points is your experimental variogram for groundwater levels. Um, and uh, this uh, line is the fitted model variogram for which we used a spherical variogram uh, model. Um, now, what does this give us? Why, why does it help to have this kind of smooth line uh, fitted to these points? Well, now, uh, for, uh, for any value of h, even between these points, uh, we can get a value of semivariance. So we know for any separation, any two locations, no matter what their separation is, whatever the value is, we will get a value of covariance or variance between those two locations. So we have a kind of spatial structure uh, over the whole region uh, where we can select any two points arbitrarily and get a value for the, the, the variance between the, the groundwater levels at those two locations, uh, no matter where they are. So this is a powerful uh, kind of information to have and we can use this for spatial interpolation using the Kriging estimator. I'm not going to go into those equations. Of course, I expect and hope that you will be familiar with them. Um, so let's move on uh, to our coding session. Um, so here we are. Uh, we had fitted a spherical model variogram. Um, and uh, we had stored it in a object called LZN. 
still using LZN, which is log of zinc, where I should be using GWL. Uh, so please pardon me for that. Uh, the objects should be correctly named to reflect what they contain. Uh, so LZN dot uh, fit. So we want the spherical fitted model. Um, so if we just print that out, it gives us, uh, so we can also look at it by clicking on it here. So it gives us some information. So it gives us a, a kind of two by two matrix. And in row one, we have something called nugget or, or NUG for short. Uh, so this uh, value is the nugget effect. So it is basically this value here where it crosses the Y axis and the nugget effect, which is the variance at spatial lag zero. Uh, so typically there should be no variance, but because of the uh, fact that we're estimating things from data um, and we fitted something to, to a data which is not exact, uh, we get some, uh, some residual variance even at zero spatial lag. Uh, and this is called the nugget effect. Uh, and roughly for us, uh, the value is 2, 2.2 or so. Um, and then uh, for the spherical model, the partial sill, this is the uh, maximum value that, that the variance sort of reaches. Um, and the partial sill is at about 42. So this, the sill is where the variogram, uh, the variance increases as spatial lag increases. So as we go further away, the variance between observations, the observations are more sort of variant at variance with each other. Um, and that continues to increase, but at some point it doesn't increase anymore. If you go further away from that point, then there is not necessarily any increase. You kind of reach a global maximum variance. And this is a very classic sort of structure that we see in spatial, spatially autocorrelated data. So the value of this maximum variance is something like 40, Three, so that seems right. It's right about here. Um, so one thing to, uh, to do is to just compare this with the sample variance. So we can compute the sample variance of the post monsoon uh, and remove the missing values. Uh, so the sample variance is something like 41. So, 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 so this is good news because the variogram, what the variogram is telling us the value for the variance of the whole sample uh, is the same as this global variance uh, uh, that the variogram uh, reaches uh, ultimately. Uh, so, so that's good agreement between our variogram and uh, a different estimator for the global variance. Um, and then this uh, parameter here, range, uh, this is the distance or the lag at which the maximum value is reached. Um, and this is about 0 0.26, which is right about here uh, on the x-axis, 0 0.26. So 0 0.26 um, units of distance. So what that means is that this is the range of spatial uh, autocorrelation. Yani the uh, values of groundwater levels are correlated within this range. So if you have a well somewhere, then you can expect that in this radius of 0 0.26, the values will be similar to what the value is at this particular well or this particular location. And then beyond that, uh, we don't expect not necessarily to be that similar. Um, and the similarity, of course, varies. At 0 0.1, it will be very similar, whereas 0 0.2, a little less similar. Beyond that, uh, not necessarily similar. Um, so those are the three uh, the nugget, the sill, and the range are the three parameters that kind of tell you the shape of the variogram, and these three parameters are very important to know. Um, and the way to know them is simply by, you can just type the name of your fitted variogram object. So, so let's, uh, let's for a moment see what it is for the exponential model. So for the exponential model, you get a slightly larger sill, which is uh, close to 50, so we had 42. Um, and then for the range, you have 0 0.13, which is kind of half the range of the, um, and the nugget is zero. So, so that's good. It actually gives you a, a nugget of zero, which is what you theoretically expect. Uh, however, uh, notice that the range is half of the range uh, that, that the spherical model. So, so your choice of model really alters the parameters and the estimates for the parameters. So you should be careful. Of course, we saw that the spherical model was a better fit. Uh, so since it was a better fit, we selected that, so we trust 
uh, we trust uh, these values, the ones for the spherical model, a little more. All right, now that we have this model variogram, uh, we want to go further. So we want to actually, um, uh, so, so if I just show you the, uh, the map, uh, we have this data, right? We have this data, but uh, this is not a lot of data. We, you know, this is quite a large region. We have roughly 200 or so wells, 250 wells. Uh, we want to know the groundwater level in between these wells as well. So what we want to do is we want to spatially predict, knowing the values at the observed locations and the structure of spatial correlation, spatial variance that we've estimated using the variogram, we want to predict statistically the values of groundwater level at all points in this region. So we will need a different kind of spatial object for that, which is called a spatial grid or spatial pixels. So we will have a grid of values uh, and then those, we will estimate the values of groundwater levels. We will predict the value of groundwater level on each point in that grid. So let's go ahead and make a make such a grid. And that is done uh, using this code, uh, create an empty grid um, where N is the number of cells. So this is 200,000 cells. That's a it's a very high resolution grid. You don't typically need such a high resolution, but I like to have good quality uh, predictions. So, uh, or rather good, good resolution in my predicted uh, output. So I use a lot of points. Um, so we can go through this and this is the same thing. We need to provide the coordinates. Um, and then at the end of this, we get a object called GRD, which is a spatial grid object. So if you say class GRD, uh, uh, it's, it's of type spatial grid. So it's a different kind of spatial data. So far, so far we had spatial points, spatial point data frame. Uh, now you know of a different kind of spatial data. Um, and then we need to project this grid to the same projection system uh, that we had for the, uh, for, the, uh, for the wells. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we can, uh, we can use this function called Krig. So this is named after somebody called Krig, uh, who first proposed this technique. Uh, now this function is new, so, so let's go through the parameters. So the first one is a formula. Uh, so we want to predict uh, the post-monsoon groundwater level uh, with, again, a constant mean assumption. Uh, we're assuming constant mean stationarity. Um, and then we want to subset the, uh, uh, our data with only the obs observations which are not missing. So this is not necessarily necessary for us because we had already removed missing observations previously. Um, uh, we could have just passed in the data. Um, and then we pass in the grid that we just created uh, in the lines above. Um, and then our fitted model variogram. So it, it needs the formula, it needs the data, uh, the observed values, which is these blue circles, uh, the grid on which the prediction will be performed and the fitted model variogram using which the prediction will be performed. So if we go ahead and run this, um, it is using something called ordinary Kriging because we used a constant mean assumption. Um, so we got a warning, that's fine. Uh, we can ignore that for now, although one should typically not ignore warnings. Um, uh, so it doesn't like the use of is and a. So, so, so it doesn't like this line. So I think if I just remove this and just pass in the data, hopefully that will just go away. Uh, if I just remove this. Yeah, okay, so that went away. All right. Um, so now, uh, so, so now we have a spatially predicted groundwater level data set where we have a value for every point on a very dense grid. Um, uh, but, but the, the thing is we need to be able to actually see it. Uh, so in order to plot this, I've added two functions, map predicted groundwater level and map variance. Uh, so what this does is if I pass in the, the 
grid object, the spatial grid, uh, it will give me a map of, of that grid. Um, and I'm not going to go through this code. Uh, I encourage you to look at it yourself. Um, this is using the raster library and the tmap library, uh, some of which you're already familiar with. Um, in the interest of time, uh, I'm going to call this function map predicted groundwater level and pass in my CRIGD object. Could not find function raster. Yeah, so this is the reason we have to load our libraries. We never loaded our libraries, right? Uh, so it couldn't find the function. The raster function is available inside the raster library. So we needed that. Um, now that we've done that, let's try and, okay. So there you have a, <coughs> excuse me. You have a CRIGD or a spatially uh, interpolated or predict uh, a spatial prediction of groundwater level over the whole region from a set of 250 or so observed values. Um, and we see that there is a large sort of hotspot of depletion around Bagpat and then one around the urban area of Meerut. And for the rest, the groundwater levels look a little better. Now, this is a statistical prediction using, done using the Kriging estimator. So typically we expect to have a variance value for every one of these predictions. We, we need to know how confident we can be of this prediction. So what we can do is we can also map the variance we can map the variance of each prediction and we're using the same object um, and this is a map of variance. Um, so you can see the darker reds mean higher variance and I'll show you why exactly there is darker red along the edges and slightly light. So, so basically what this is saying is that we can be more confident of our predictions where, where there's lighter red colors and a little less confident where there's more red and, and, and really not confident at all when there's, you know, sort of deep, deep red shade. Um, so this is just a measure of how good our prediction is. Um, so let's go back to this for a while. And now let's look at what we've done. So we started with this data. This was data that was somebody went out there to an observation well, lowered a tape into it measured the groundwater level in the year 2015 at 245 locations in post monsoon in this Western UP region. And we took that data and we applied a geostatistical model and using the variogram that we estimated from this data, we estimated the structure of spatial variation and we spatially predicted purely in a statistical, from a statistical point of view, we haven't gotten into any hydrology we don't need to know what the subsurface flows were like. We don't need to know anything about the process. I mean, we do if we want to argue about stationarity, but our prediction is done purely with statistical methods, geostatistical methods. Um, uh, we, we, uh, we, we prepared this map. Um, and, and of course, as you can see, the circles are a bit bigger here in Bakpath. So we expect uh, these predictions to be also larger. Um, and then circles are a little smaller. Now see if the, the variance here is very high. Well, that's because in Ghaziabad, we don't really have a lot of data. So if we don't have a date, data, we're, we're not going to be very confident of our predictions, which is what this variance is telling you. So if your prediction variance is high, then you need to be careful about what you use the data for um, uh, and how much confidence you can place in your prediction. Uh, so this is very useful to have and this is something that you don't have with physical spatial interpolation methods like inverse distance weighting or, or other methods which are deterministic, which are not statistical in nature. So having said that, let's go back to our, um, our code. Now, remember we had uh, computed the sum of squared errors for our fitted model variogram to see how good the fit is. Uh, we have one more way after we've done prediction what we can do is we can do something called cross-validation using a command called crig.cv. Um, and cross-validation, what it does is it basically takes out one observed value of groundwater level, predicts it using the rest of the data. So then at that location, you have an observed value as well as a predicted value. So you can compare how good your prediction is uh, with what was observed. Um, and this is, uh, 
sort of often used in the research literature to you know estimate how how well you've done with your model selection and model fitting so let's go ahead and do that um, and then let's uh, let's uh, pr regress our predicted values on the y-axis on our observed values so if you look at the uh, object produced and you look at the data we can just look at the data uh, it returns an object called lzn.cv uh, and we can look at only the data of that object. <coughs> um, um, so you have uh, a predicted value in the first column, var1.predicted and then var1.var. This is the prediction variance. Um, and then the observed uh, value at that point um, and the residual when you um, and the z-score of that residual. So what you can do is you can uh, plot the predicted value on and the observed value. So that, that's what we've done here. This is a scatter plot of the, predict, the prediction versus the observed value. And then you can uh, regress this and draw a regression line and, and then try to get a summary. So you can see that the slope of this line is about 0 0.63 or so. So uh, ideally we want the prediction and the observed values to be exactly equal, but we find here that on average, the predicted values are uh, less than the uh, observed values. They're really about 63% of the observed values. There is some underestimation. Um, we can also perform a correlation test between the predicted and the observed values. And we see that the Pearson uh, Correlation coefficient is 0 0.77 or so. Um, so. So the values are highly correlated, but there seems to be some underestimation. So in, if you wanted a better cross-validation, if you wanted more agreement between predicted and observed values, you would have to go back and question some of your assumptions, some of your methods, some of the choices of uh, model um, and some of the parameters that you used to achieve a better fit. And this is all something, uh, these are things that will be gained by experience and your understanding of, of geostatistical modeling. So just to summarize what we've covered today, we looked at variogram parameters, sill, nugget, and range. And these are the parameters that kind of parameterize or tell you or contain the shape of the variogram function. Uh, they each have a meaning and we saw visually uh, how we can plot them uh, as a graph in R and what each of them means. We also performed spatial prediction using ordinary Kriging. Uh, we made a constant mean assumption and we performed ordinary Kriging and we used that to create a map of groundwater levels over a region of uh, a sub-region of western Uttar Pradesh. And then using uh, Kriging, we tested how good our model selection was by cross-validating uh, our spatial prediction. So and the way that worked is you predict one uh, value at a time. So you, you go to a place where you've observed the groundwater level, you remove that value from the data set. So you have an observed value at that point. You predict the value at the same location using the rest of the data and then you compare the predicted value with the observed value and that gives you a sense of how good your model selection is. You can repeat the same process with another model and compare uh, how good the, the agreement is between your predictions and your observed values. Um, and that gives you a measure of uh, which model to select uh, for, your, uh, for your particular research task. Um, and that's what we did in uh, this session. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.